Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session. In today's session, we will share the detail of our local and cloud native gaming platform architecture, and we will also give cases about how the platform will help with education. Before we get started, let me give a brief introduction to our 3D UGC gaming platform, Yahaha. In Yahaha, we offer a modular set of services for game development including millions of ready-to-use 3D assets, multiplayer server, and local creation functions. And we have attracted more than 100,000 early assets creators and generated more than 10,000 fun games since we launched the alpha version last year. We can use this video to get a better understanding of the key features that may Yahaha stand out. Okay, now you should have some sense of Yahaha platform. Let's move on to data of the platform architecture. In our platform, there are two key points, no coding and cloud native. As a no code platform, we offer a simple and free to use creation tool that enables users to, game, to bring their game ideas to life. Game development has long been the exclusive domain of programmers. However, the quality of a game is not solely determined by a developer's programming skill, but more importantly, by their creativity. Our local platform eliminates the need for advanced technical knowledge and empowers a wider range of creation to express themselves through 3D interactive experience. Combined with our one click publish process, it fosters a more diverse and creative community. And as a cloud native platform, the game created by user is turned into multiplayer online game automatically. The platform has stressed away the complexity and technical requirements that are typically associated with online game development, allowing anyone to create an online multiplayer game with easy. This cloud native approach also allows us to easily scale up or down depending users' demand ensuring that our platform can handle large numbers of users and provide a seamless experience. So firstly, let's explain what it's like to build a game without coding. In this video, we will create a FPS game where animals search for and attack the player. And the player can pick out a gun to fight back. We can start our game building with a predefined template so that we don't need to build a Scene from start. Here we draw some lovely animal models into the scene. And now we are adding behavior to the model.
As you can see in this demo, the creator didn't write a single line of code, and this is precisely the goal of the no-code platform, so to allow users to play their image games freely. After years of effort, our no-code platform has become quite mature, and next we will deep dive the platform architecture and technical details. In the previous video example, you can see that we can add behavior to game address by configuration, and we call it game component. So what is a game component? For game developers, a game component is a component that adds various abilities to a game object and can be customized by modifying its configuration. For example, in the scene, we have a gun. Without component, it's just a model that user can interact with. But as soon as we add a gun component to it, Now the player can equip the gun and fire with it. And creator could also adjust the gun's attack power and magazine capacity by modifying its configuration. Thus, the same component could express different behavior. On the other hand, we rely on experienced developers to provide various types of game components. For game component developers, a game component consists of an extensible Lua screen and a customizable UI. Developers can encapsulate the component's functionality by the Lua screen. Since our platform is cloud native, developer doesn't need to care about network synchronization via writing screen. This reduces development difficulty significantly. As an example, here is the fire function when implementing the gun component. So on the traditional platform, developers need to handle entity interpolation, input prediction, recompensation, and those are all complicated issues. However, in our platform, the developer only need to spawn a bully entity and give the entity an impartial force in the aiming direction and comply, apply the damage to the first content entity. And that's done. All the annoying network synchronization issues are automatically handled by the game engine. So you only develop as a single player local game, but you got a multiplayer online game instead. In addition to Lua Script, we also provide a what you see is what you get UI design tool to help set up the components configuration UI. When the script is loaded, the game engine will convert the user's configuration into Lua variables. So the Lua script can change the component's behavior according to the configuration, making it more extensible. So we already see that Lua is the development language for game component. We choose Lua because it is a language widely used in game development. Most developers are very familiar with it. And its learning curve is smooth. Even developers who haven't used Lua before can quickly get started. In addition, Lua supports whole updates, which allows developers to update the logic of release games at any time. And it means that developers can iterate the game rapidly and fix published games bug promptly. Since Lua runs in a sandbox, the screen bug won't crash the entire game system, providing good loveliness. And we can also control Lua's exposed APIs through the sandbox to prevent developers from running malicious code and thus ensure the security. And although Lua has many advantages for gameplay system, it is not the best choice for the game engine. When designing a game engine, we focus more on high performance, automatic network synchronization, easy game data tracking, and backward compatibility. Therefore, we adopted the design philosophy of data-oriented design and 
implement the game engine using CSOP. The game engine is the core of our platform and it makes the local and network KLS development possible. So for more detailed information about the game engine design, you can refer to our summit, deep dive into data or ENT design for cross-platform UGC game engine. So now we choose Lua for the gameplay system and CSAP for the game engine. And it's good. It brings the best extensibility to the gameplay system and best performance for the game engine. However, it also brings issues when integrating the gameplay system with the game engine. One major issue is how to interoperate between CSAP and Lua. And the other issue is how to specify the gameplay logic's entry point. To enable the interoperability between CSOP and Lua, the game engine creates a Lua virtual machine after starts up and registers all the APIs as Lua functions in the virtual machine. After that, the game engine launch queries through the Lua virtual machine. And at this point, the Lua script can call the API functions that were registered earlier. And the Lua virtual machine will forward the API calls to the game engine for execution. Although the idea is quite simple here, registering these APIs manually requires a lot of tedious work, and it takes much more effort to make the API call efficient. Luckily, there are already many mature frameworks that can do this task for us. For example, we use Tulua to generate binding codes via automatically. So now we can interoperate CSOP and Lua. However, the scripts are only loaded once at start, while the gameplay logic may need to be executed at any time during the game. So to improve the flexibility of the script, we introduce event mechanism. The game engine will expose various events and scripts can register callback functions to them via loading. And then the game engine starts simulating the world and will distribute events to the previously registered callback function when they occur. As a result, scripts can dynamically respond to events during the game and thus enhancing the gameplay system's flexibility and extensibility. So far, we have attained the initial architecture of the local cloud native gaming platform at the foundation is the server cluster layer. As a cloud native platform, most of the game logic is running in the game server. The cloud infrastructure ensures reliable game session, and we can elastic scaling compute resource to minimize cost. We also use hybrid cloud so that we can match players to the game server with lowest latency. The second layer is the game engine. It is the core of the entire platform. Based on the DOD pattern, the game engine achieves high performance network synchronization and game world simulation. And it also easy data tracking and provides backward compatibility. The game engine layer provides developers low level technical support to ensure high performance and stability for the game. Upon game engine is the gameplay system. It can split into two parts. The first part is the Lua script. With the rich set of APIs provided by the game engine, it gives professional game developers a high degree of freedom. And developers can also encapsulate their Lua script as game components and share them within the community to help non-coding developers. Game component is the other part of the gameplay system. It's implemented based on Lua. It's an easy to use tool for creators without programming experience. Creator can config and compose several components to set up a complicated game object. With the rich set of components provided by the community, creator can build their unical game without config. Currently, the platform architecture seems already pretty good. Each level of developers has suitable development tools to create games. However, the fun of games often comes from creators' constantly emerging ideas. Creators can always come up with some unique game mechanism that haven't been provided by game components. For non-coding creators, it would be very frustrating not be able to turn their 
exciting ideas into games. To address this creator's need, we developed a graphic programming tool called NoGraph. In NoGraph, creator can implement game logic by simply connecting different types of nodes together. This tool makes game development more intuitive and visual, so non-coding developers can easily explore various possibilities and implement their novel idea. Let's take an example. Suppose we want to implement a smart light that turns on when there are people along and turns off when there are no people along. Here is the no graph that implements it. First, we register the on-trigger event of the light. And when the event is triggered, we first check if the enter game address is a player. If it is, we increment the value of the variable player count. And then we check if the current value of player count is 1. If it is, it means that someone has just entered the area along the line. And we turn on the line. The nodes in the bottom section are used to perform a similar check when a game address leaves the trigger or the light and to check if we need to turn off the light. So we can see that compared to writing Lua scripts, using no graph to express game logic is more, much more intuitive. Now let's take a look at the component required to implement the no graph. First, we need to provide a game editor that allows user to create and connect nodes. In the editor, we encapsulate the game engine's API into a series of nodes. By simply creating a node, the user completes the API call. And users can control the nodes' execution order through control flow connection and control the input parameters of each node by data flow connections. The editor also provides variables and functions to improve development, efficiency, reusability, and maintainability. When the user finishes development, the editor will serialize the graph to a file so that the user can edit again. More importantly, the game engine also needs this file to execute the logic in the graph. The content of the graph file are divided into three parts. The first part is the metadata, which includes the graph's ID, name, and etc. The second part is all the nodes. Each node contains its position in the editor and its node type. And finally, there are edges, each of which indicates the start points node and fields as well as the end points node and field. Now we have a graph file contains all the gameplay logic in it. However, the game engine doesn't support executing it directly. We can choose to implement a graph interpreter in the engine to pass and run the graph at long time. But pass graph each time will lead to a poor performance and increase game loading and execution time. Considering that we, the game engine already supports Lua script, we can compile the graph into Lua script at the edit time first. And then the game engine can execute the script directly at long time. This avoids the overhead of passing the graph while playing games, thus improving the play, playing experience. To compile the graph into Lua script, we divided the process into two steps. Firstly, the parser will pass the graph file into an AST, and then the code generator will generate Lua code based on the AST. You may wonder what is AST and why do we at the intermediate step instead of converting the graph file to Lua script directly. AST is short for extra syntax tree. It is a tree representing the extra syntactic structure of a programming code, and is a data structure widely used in computer design. Its structure is language agnostic and making it shareable and reusable between different languages. For example, here is the AST of Euclidean algorithm. The algorithm written in different languages will generate the same AST, and based on the AST, we can also produce function functionally identical code in any language. Due to the syntactic mismatch between the graph file and Lua, 
Converting the graph file into Lua directly will lead to a very complex implementation of the compiler. There is this massive edge case that make it bar problem. However, by decoupling the parser and code generated using AST, we transform the complex compiler into two much simpler components. In addition, AST also makes parser and node gener and code generator more reusable if we want to transform M source language to N target language. The complexity is OM plus N instead of OMM. So actually, based on this design, we were able to extend the node graph to support the effect graph in just one V. By effect graph, you can customize your game words as that easily. If you are interested in this, you can check our another session, how your haha platform helps create stylized words. Next, let's take a deep look at the process of passing a graph into AST. We can predefine the AST structure of all nodes. Then when passing the graph, we only need to generate the AST of each node one by one along the execution flow to attain the entire AST. For example, for the trigger enter event node, the AST has two trial nodes. One being the object that the event is bound to, and the other being the callback function that is triggered when the event occurs. The callback function takes an entity as input parameter and a block statement as the body of the callback function. The next, the next node is the first try of the event callback function. It is a function call to check if the game object is a player and it takes the entity as a parameter and save the result to a local variable. And the second try node of the copy function is a branch node. This node has three children, representing its condition if branch and else branch. And we continue to traverse the graph, and in the end, we can obtain the AST of the graph as follows. Now we get the AST, so we can use it to generate the Lua code. For each type of AST node, we can predefine its corresponding Lua template. For example, the event node on the Lua has the code template as below. It has two placeholder corresponding to the code generated by its two children. Replace the placeholder with the code generated by its children, we can get the nodes Lua code so that we can iterate the AST in post order. After Travis order nodes, the code on the Lua node is the Lua script corresponding to the entire graph. So the first visiting node is the first parameter of registering the event and is an expression that retrieves self entity. Thus, we got the script of event node's first placeholder. And the second node to be visited is the identifier of the input parameter of the callback function. Continue to traverse the AST, and here we generate the first statement of the callback function, which checks if the game object is a player. So after traverse the AST, we can obtain the Lua script corresponding to the graph at the Lua node as this. Okay, so look at the architecture of the node graph. When the graph editor starts up, it retrieves a schema of all the supported APIs from the game engine and converts it into a series of graph nodes. Developers can create and con connect nodes using the graph editor. When the development is done, the graph editor serializes the graph into a graph file and hands it over to the graph compiler. And then the graph compiler will compile the graph file into a Lua script. And when the game starts running, the game engine loads the generated Lua script and executes it. Thus, we got an intuitive development tool which has the same performance as Lua script. 
In our graph, we also offer some features that can improve development efficiency. The first feature is type chat. In our graph, we can set the data type for each node's data input and output fields. Type chat automatically tracks if the data type match when connecting nodes, thus avoiding long-time errors caused by data type mismatch. Another feature is node search. We provide rich and diverse nodes, although we have classified the nodes into hierarchical categories by its functionality. It's still not convenient to find special nodes by browsing the game in Explorer. Therefore, we provide fuzzy search, which allow user to input fuzzy keywords and the system will match the keyword with no names, description, and other information to find the desired nodes. When a user draws a line from a field, no graph automatically search for nodes that can be connected to the field, and that is the matching type search. Combining it with field search, this feature can greatly improve the user's development efficiency. Sloop, graph editor, and graph compiler user can develop their own script by connecting nodes now. However, if the behavior of the graph node does not meet their expectation, debugging can be difficult. So a graph debugger would be really helpful in this case. In the graph debugger, users can set black points on any node. And when the node is executed, the game will pause and the user can stay through each node or jump directly to the next node with a black point. In addition, the value of each field on the node is displayed in real time in the debugger. So how can we implement the graph, edit, the graph debugger while the game engine is actually running the graph logic through the Lua script? Since we can only debug the generated Lua file, we generated a source map that obtained the mapping from each node to the line number of its corresponding raw code in the script. When a black point is set on a node, we can use the source map to find the line number of the node's corresponding statement in the Lua script and set a black point on that line using the Lua debug. And to show the node field's value in debug, we save each field to a Lua local variable in the generated script. And the variable's name is encoded by the node ID and field ID. Therefore, we can map the variable value in the debugger back to the node fields in the graph, making it easy for users to watch execution results. In the platform architecture, the node graph and game component are in the same layer. And they both rely on Lua script to implement function internally. Through GAN component, GAN developers can easily add common behavior and features to the game object. While through the node graph, they can freely implement their novel game idea. The combination of these two components provide game creators a more efficient and extensible way of development. So, and now it seems that the platform architecture is fully featured now. Even non-coding developers can implement their logic through the node graph. So do we still have room for the improvement? So let's check a case. Suppose we need to configure a monster in the scene that draws corn when the player defeat like. So, we, if we want to configure a game object like this, we need to do, do it like this way. We need to add NPC component, patrol component, attack component, and item drop component to the game object. And we also need to add necessary configuration for each component. This process is very cubesome. But configuring complex game object is so frequently at in, and it has become a major factor affecting development efficiency.
You may think that we can encapsulate all these small components into a complex component, but this approach will make the complex component hard to maintain. When designing game components, we hope that each component provides a single and independent function so that different game components are low coupled and high flexible. And user can freely compose game components to create value functionality. However, this flexibility also comes with the cost of complex configuration. To eliminate the cost, we introduce the assembler mechanism. Users can recall frequent process as workflows and when they need to do it again, they only need to replay the workflow to complete the assembly with, within one click. Here we use some pre-recorded assemblers. As you can see, now we can set up a monster in just one click. Now let's take a look on the implement. To support assembler, we first encapsulate all the operations in Studio as APIs so that user can write queries to operate Studio programmatically. However, a more convenient way is to use the workflow recorder. It will record all the user's operations during recording and packages them as workflow queries. Later, when a user wants to execute the workflow, the workflow runner will execute the corresponding script and replay the user's operations automatically. After the addition of the assembler, our platform architecture becomes more complete. It automates tedious workflow in the studio and enabling developers to create games more efficient. And for the player can focus more on creative ideas and gameplay design. This makes game development faster, smoother, and more enjoyable. In the efficient layer, we also introduce a collaborative tool, since it's inevitable to cooperate with people in a large project. Moreover, it's also more fun to build a game with your friends. In co-create mode, your operation will key sync in real time with your collaborator, and you can even co-create a game on your mobile. Implement such a mode has many challenges, like how to resolve conflict, guarantee the performance, and simpler the operation, and etc. We have a dedicated session to discuss it in apps, co-creating games on mobile, a generic architecture for learning game editor. Okay, above is what we have learned and gained from implementing a no-code and cloud-native gaming platform. Next, let's welcome Glenn to share some practical applications for education. Okay, thank you, Sing Sui. So, uh, my name is Glenn. I'm in charge of uh, uh, business development in APAC. Uh, I, as I just introduced myself, I'm not an engineer. So, uh, but I have been in uh, gaming industry for like uh, 12 years and uh, in IT industry, 18 years. So today, actually, I would like to uh, explain uh, why Yaha platform is meaningful and uh, helpful for education, especially uh, game development. So, and also after that, I would like to introduce uh, our achievement with uh, uh, game industry partners. So I assume that uh, most of you haven't heard about Yaha platform. So before I move, uh, jump into the uh, main uh, agenda, I'd like to explain about, briefly explain about Yaha platform. So my presentation would be somewhat macro view of Yaha, Yaha platform. So it would be much easier to understand. So basically Yaha platform is very simple. Uh, when it comes to 3D game creation, uh, you don't need to have knowledge for uh, coding or programming. 
So we provide three main elements. The first is uh, Yahaha Studio, where you can create a game without coding and programming. And we provide a uh, Yaha application where you can play together with your friend the game you created on Yaha Studio. And the third is actually uh, our backend infrastructure, which is most important. Uh, this makes everything uh, simple and easy for uh, 3D game creation. So it's a more complicated uh, stuff, but uh, uh, but something beyond my knowledge to explain. But uh, you can have uh, more information on our website. So and also we gave uh, lots of other like uh, sessions. We will provide more information regarding our technical sessions after GDC. So please check that out. And uh, once you uh, download our uh, Yaha Studio, you can. Uh, start the launcher, and you can open the Yaha uh, editor. So inside of the editor, there are more than 50 uh, templates. Uh, there are so many different type of uh, templates from fairy tale to like a cyber world. So you can also start uh, from scratch with actually a plain template as well. The most uh, the beauty of this platform is we provide more than 1 million assets. So you can use freely, and the creation is like a drag and drop. And once you finish the creation, you can actually publish by one click. Then you can actually share with your friends and play together the game. So now I'd like to explain how, uh, why, uh, what, what kind of aspect of Yaha platform is uh, applicable to uh, game education. So mostly uh, 10 to 1 uh, students uh, start to learn game, uh, start to learn games, a uh, game development, uh, but they don't have any knowledge regarding uh, the game development process and the game business. But it is very important when it comes to their career path, which is related to their talent. But if they understand about more about the game development process, they can actually find a better way to be a specialist. They can start from a generalist first, so they don't lose any kind of like opportunity so you need to pushing around if you don't know which the way is the best. But if you have a big picture of the game development and the process, then you can find the way uh, in a better way. So with the Yaha platform, you, a student can understand the process, of, uh, the process of game content development. And secondly, a uh, student can understand game as a service. Thir third, a uh, student can understand the users from a uh, service point of view. And lastly, student can understand game from business perspective. And also, yeah, although I explained the yeah, Although I explained the Yaha platform, you don't need to have any tech uh, programming and uh, not programming and uh, coding. Uh, we Yaha platform support uh, Lua script and Node Graph assembler. These are the not a, a hardcore like skills, but it is enough to grab the gist of uh, scripting and code coding uh, design. Uh, logic design. And also, Yaha platform is not limited to graphics. So you can freely bring any type of uh, graphic style to your platform. It is not, it shouldn't be like a block key or like a Lego style. And now I would like to touch on some specifics why, uh, which is uh, more detailed elements 
what we provide is uh, helpful for the education. So our platform is based on Unity, but it provides a much simpler UI than Unity. So this will re reduce the resistance of students who are new to the game development. So that uh, students will not be get bored with the game development because of the UIs. And uh, on Yaha's Yaha platform, you can actually easily test the concept at early stage. So when it comes to game concept, it is very important for the game success, but there is no way to test and uh, get the feedback from the users, but you can actually have the feedback from the, your users right away because the publishing is by one click. And also, uh, you can also import the assets you created uh, outside of Yaha. This is important for uh, 3D, 3D artists and 3D modelers. They can actually explore with their assets. They can actually import their assets into 3D virtual space and they can actually check how it looks like and how it works. So there, it could actually open up the chance to sharpen up your quality of your work. And this is uh, yeah, another slide. And node graph. So you can easily learn the logic floor and the relation among other functions. And Lua script, you will help to, you, you, can, you can understand about the concept and the structure of the scripting easily. Another beauty of this uh, Yaha platform is you first materialize your idea into 3D. Then you can actually check the, how it works with the logic and scripting by checking the details later. This will drive a more idea-oriented game development at the early stage of your study, which could uh, motivate students more in game development. Now I'd like to introduce what we have done with uh, uh, educational partners. So we signed the MOU with the Jeonju University in Korea. So uh, last winter, we actually gave a seasonal lecture. So our evangelist gave uh, two days of a lecture at Jeonju University with a game department student. And uh, Jeonju University is a part of a uh, realistic media uh, project group. There are six more universities in this group. Currently, we are working with the Gongguk University to make another course for their summer sessions. So this is the scene of our lectures. So after just one hour of a lecture, the students could make some like a game like this. So the lecture was actually consi consist of like a three hours of a class. So we are also having another approach for online courses. So partnering with the uh, JMK. JMK in Finland, we are developing a beginner course in game development and we provide the educational programs through online courses. Lastly, uh, we are also working with actually a game academy in Korea. So we, met, we signed the MOU and a KGA uh, is uh, actively adopting Yaha platform in various uh, 
Unity-related training courses, and they are creating uh, metaverse platform specialized training course as well. And also, we are working together on a curriculum, so which will be a base for other uh, educational partners. So, to summarize today's uh, presenta presentation from me, I would like to show a video. Hello,我是陈主大学的教授,Game,我是陈主大学的教授,Game,我是陈主大学的教授,Game,我是陈主大学的教授,Game,我是陈主大学的教授,Game,我是陈主大学的教授,Game,我是陈主大学的教授,
So we are much more flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say is because I'm not an engineer, but we are, as I explained, our graphic style is more flexible because we are based on Unity. So, but uh, when it comes to Roblox, the style itself is, is somewhat limited to the like uh, blocky and the uh, Lego like uh, like a style. Mm -hmm. So that's the one uh, one thing, and also. Uh, technical wise, uh, we are uh, fully actually cloud based. So, mm, okay. and also, as you know, the Roblox it has been uh, launched, uh, it's been uh, like uh, more than 10 years since it launched. Roblox so, is like older than that, it's like from 2004. Yes. So. I, <laughs> I guess we are kind of up to date technology, <laughs> I'd like to say. Uh, the no coding system is much easier. So, uh, when you when it comes to Roblox, you actually need to take some time to uh, learn how to actually use it. It takes more than like uh, a few hours, something like that. But when it comes to Yahaha, we are actually running a, a inbus event. You can actually create a game in fifteen minutes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.